Hello, my amazing artists, and welcome back to art class. Before I show you what we are going to be making today, um, I actually have a story that I'm going to read for you. I know I don't usually read stories to the older grades, but I think you guys are going to like this. So a holiday that is coming up soon is the Day of the Dead, or El Dia de los Muertos. Um, it goes from October 31st to November 2nd, and it is one of Mexico's most important holidays. And it goes over those three days as a time to remember loved ones that are now gone. If you've ever seen the movie Coco, that is completely based around Day of the Dead. And we are actually going to be making sugar skulls designed after the ones that they make in Mexico. But I wanted to share this book with you because it cites a lot of the important traditions and foods and things that Mexican families do to help celebrate El Dia de los Muertos. So... I'm going to read it and then I'll show you guys the pictures. Above a small town in Mexico, the sun rises like a great marigold. A soft sound comes from a warm kitchen. Slap, 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 slap. The children hear it and wake up. Mama is making empanadas, little pastries fat with meat. The children crowd around. Un probadita, a taste. Wait, says Mama. Esperance. Till when? Soon. So they have to wait. They can't eat the empanadas yet. For weeks, the family has been preparing for this day. Los tios, the uncles, have picked fruit. Bright oranges, red apples, tejocotes of gold. The children have tried to sneak the fruit. Wait, say the uncles. Till when? Soon. So they're collecting lots of fruit and bananas. For days, las tias, the ants, have been grinding dry chiles to powder. The children have been sniffing the chili powder and sneezing. Wait, say las tias, hachu! The children sneeze. For days, papa has been visiting the bakery, bringing back bulging bundles. The children have tried to sneak a peek at what is hidden there. Papa says, Wait, wait, wait. So Papa is bringing something back from the bakery, but we don't know what it is. For days, Mama has baked pan de muertos, bread of the dead. The children have tried to sneak pan de muertos to eat. Ni una amiga, they ask. No, Mama says, not one crumb. For nights, all the family has been making tamales for this day. The children have tried to sneak tamales to eat. Esperanza. So they can't eat the tamales yet. They have to wait. Today, Papa has cut long wands of, of sugar cane. The children try to sneak the cane pieces to suck the sweetness out. But they have to wait. So we have all sorts of treats. We have sugar cane. What else are we going to have? Today, Las Tias brew a sauce of chocolate and chile, a mole sauce. They put chicken in, stirring and stirring again. The children try to sneak the mole. Just a taste. Esperanza, the stirring ants say. Gotta wait. So we have a delicious mole sauce. That's exciting. The children come from the market with loads of marigolds, so those bright orange flowers. In every room bloom marigold bouquets like little glowing suns. We'll learn about the importance of these marigolds in just a little bit. <clears throat> now night has come. The family gathers all the things they have made for this day, and they go out into the night. Families from all the houses come carrying all the things they have made, carrying marigolds bright as suns and candles like stars. The little procession goes walking through the street, walking over the hill, walking to the graveyard where their loved ones lie. They go dropping a path of petals for the spirits to find their way. So here's a picture of all the families making their way to the graveyard to bring the gifts to their loved ones. Okay. 
The family comes to the graves of Los Abuelos, the grandparents. There they place salt and water in small bowls, and they place all the things that they have made. So all of the foods, the treats, all of those things, along with some bowls of salt and water. They sing and they dance. And they remember Los Abuelos. Must we still wait, asks the children? No, says Mama. Eat, eat, eat. So they finally get to eat all of that delicious food and all of those treats. Papa unwraps his bundles. Sugar skulls! The children squeal and eat this treat. Mama slices pan de muertos. Everyone tastes the sweet bread. One child bites his and ay, 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 he finds a tiny skinny skeleton Mama baked inside. Now it is late. The family gathers what is left of all the things they have brought. They gather platters, jugs, and jars, and they gather their sleeping children. Upon the graves, they leave the marigolds. Then they go walking, walking home, carrying candles like stars. So they celebrate all night long, they enjoy the food. So, like I said, Day of the Dead goes from October 31st to November 2nd. Families prepare favorite foods of the departed and picnic at their graves. They adorn the graves with marigolds, the traditional flower of the dead, and make a path of petals to lead the spirits to the offerings, which, along with the delicious food, usually includes salt and water, which are symbols of ongoing life. The people dance, sing, and share memories of their loved ones, welcoming their spirits, who are thought to return briefly to take part in the celebration. So for our project, we are going to make some sugar skulls, and I'm gonna show you how to draw them, and then you will be able to decorate them however you like. So for making your El Dia de los Muertos sugar skulls, um, I'm going to pretend that this rectangle here is my paper. You want to make sure that you're holding your paper vertically, which is the tall way up and down, in order to fit the shape of your skull. Now, if we were in school together, I would have a tracer for you, so I just want you to do your best with creating the shape of the skull. And you really want to fill up your entire paper. So the way that you can do that is about part way down. Um, you want to first create the curve of the head. You're going to come up and around and you're kind of going to bring the sides of the head in ever so slightly after you do that and remember as i'm drawing you can pause the video as i go but i'm going to make my way through the drawing and then i'm going to explain some of the decorations that you can add we'll look at my example and you can also google lots of examples of sugar skulls to get lots of ideas but remember you can always pause the video if i'm going a little too fast for you now we have to draw the part of the jaw so we're actually going to bring this around and curve it in like that. And you want to make sure that you've still left some room at the bottom here. And then from the middle of these two spots right here, you are going to draw the rest of your skull. So there's like your general shape. Now we also want to add the teeth in this area right here. So this part's actually going to come in and down in and down. Now I'm not going to close it. It just simply comes down and we're going to create your teeth. So for this part, I'm actually going to draw a line that goes across the middle. And making your teeth is actually pretty easy. I'm going to do one big line down the middle and I'm going to do two smaller lines on each side like that. And then you're going to use the space on the top and the bottom to close them. So I'm going to just connect them together like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And there's your, your skull's teeth. Now I'm also going to draw a little line from here to here and here to here. So there's your space. Okay. Now, for the nose of your sugar skull, you're going to actually make an upside down heart. So if you want to just completely rotate your paper and draw a heart, that's fine too. But I have no problem drawing an upside down heart for my nose, and you want to try and center it. And then two round circles for the eye sockets. And there's your general skull, all right? 
I know I'm not giving you a trace or anything, I just want you to do your best. Now, once you've drawn in your skull, you can make some decisions on how you would like to decorate it. Something to consider about sugar skulls, however, is that you want your designs to be symmetrical, which means if I were to draw an invisible line down the middle of my, sc of my skull, it's going to be the same on either side. And you can see that that's true to my design that I've done here. If I were to put an invisible line whoop, right down the middle, you can see that I mirrored even the colors. Okay, I kind of did a pattern with my teeth, that's fine. But you can even see even like the colors of the little dots that I've done along the end along the sides here, everything is the same. Purple, purple, orange, 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 orange. Everything mirrors each other. I also have here's a couple other little sugar skulls for you guys to see. It's very common to make the designs of the eyes into flowers. So you could really do whatever you want around there, but it's very common to have the Eyes kind of looking like flowers, very similar for the marigolds, lots of swirls and things. This one on the bottom here has a lot of swirls. This one has swirls and some polka dots on it. All right, so that's an idea for decorating your sugar skulls. All right, so you want to start off, um, you know, just by kind of doing whatever you don't have to you know you're not making it look like an actual person but like if you're going to do the flowers and the eyes kind of work on both at the same time so that whatever you draw in one you draw the same thing in the other so if i were to do some flowers all right if you're going to do the little petal shapes around the eyes and like i said if you google sugar skulls you will get lots and lots of different ideas for ways that you can decorate your sugar skulls. But these are just some basic things that you can do. Um, lots of like fringe, very floral ideas. If you're going to do, like I did a heart here, a common way that you're going to see a lot of these sugar skulls decorated is if you actually draw kind of a half circle and you do kind of a flower shape coming out of there and maybe it might also have some rings around it like that things like that. You might also have a little design within the head right there. So whatever you do, you want to make sure that you do the same thing on both sides. So you're going to be working both sides of the picture at the same time. All right. I decided to do a swirl here, swirl here. All right, so I could keep going and decorating, and then you want to add lots and lots of color, but make sure that your color also matches your symmetrical design as well. So do your best with the drawing. Um, there is also a Sugar School uh, video on Art for Kids Hub if you need an additional reference to how I was drawing it, but I basically took the same directions that they give you. Um, but just do your best with the shape of the skull. Try and use your entire paper, okay? Don't give me a whole paper and an itty bitty little checker skull the size of this nose. Make it the full size of the paper. The bigger it is, the more details you can add and the more fun you can have coloring it. Uh, one more thing to add, when you color your sugar skull, you want to leave the actual sugar skull white. You're really only coloring details that are on it. So, um, and that's it. So that's all you have to do. You have one week to work on this. When you're done, take a picture and send it to me so I can see it. And I can't wait to see what your sugar skulls look like. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this project. And I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.